James Bond was right and he already did the test long time ago. There is a difference between shaking and stirring. I would like to treat water the same way I treat a beautiful woman. This statement that water has a memory, of course that practically changes our whole way of looking at the world. Water is a bearer of secrets. It's full of mystery. It is always helpful when it comes to creating and preserving organic life. It stubbornly resists when we try to make it obey the established laws of physics. And then it lets the secret out, but poses a hundred new mysteries. To physicists, water is abnormal. While other materials contract as they cool, water expands when it freezes, making it lighter so that it floats on the surface of liquid water. If it sank to the bottom instead, life could not exist down there. The oceans would be one giant iceberg. And Mr. Masuro Emoto. Mr. Emoto became terribly interested in the molecular structure of water and what affects it. Now, water is the most receptive of the four elements. Mr. Emoto thought perhaps it would respond to non-physical events. So he set up a series of studies, applied mental stimuli, and photographed it with a dark field microscope. This first picture is a picture of water from the Fujiwara Dam. And this picture is the same water after receiving a blessing from a Zen Buddhist monk. Now, in this next series of pictures, Mr. Emoto printed out words, taped them to bottles of distilled water, and left them out overnight. This first photograph is a picture of the pure distilled water, just the essence of itself. These subsequent photographs, as you can see, are each different. This is the Chi of Love. And we move along here to thank you. And you can see where he taped that uh, to this bottle here. But if you read Japanese, you already knew that. <laughs> now, Mr. Emoto speaks of the thought or intent being the driving force in all of this. The science of how that actually affects the molecules is unknown, except to the water molecules, of course. And it's really fascinating when you keep in mind that 90% of our bodies are water. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? If thoughts can do that to water, imagine what our thoughts can do to us. There is much to be discovered about water in the great outdoors as well. But to do that, one has to have the gift of seeing rivers and streams as partners. An Austrian river engineer has found a unique way of doing this. When you listen closely to a river or brook or stream, you immediately recognize its character. It's quite simple. If the stream is loud, I know I'm dealing with an energetic stream. If it's quiet, I'm dealing with a more gentle body of water. And thus, there is a very important distinction that I can make. I want my intervention in nature to be as small as possible. That means I go to the water, and as a river engineer, I invite it to stay with me and do something for me, instead of the other way around, where I do something with the water. The normal concept for regulating streams 
consists of forcing them into a corset of concrete. But when the water is high, that method often does not work. But if one gives the stream a chance to move in the shape of a spiral, it will remain on its normal course. We've used river engineering methods to show that the current thread can be directed from the outside to the inside and even into the stream bed. That means that the energy flows into the stream bed, flowing downward without causing damage. This has a highly positive effect, especially when the water is high, because the banks are not affected by the stream thread. Thus the water flows downward without damaging either bank. Success has proved Ottmar Grober right. He's drawing on the findings of the legendary natural scientist and forester Victor Schauberger, who in the period between the wars pointed out that one must study watercourses in order to deal with the problems caused by severe flooding. If we river engineers can successfully find a way of keeping the water in the landscape, we can save ourselves a lot of trouble and a lot of money as well. And at the same time, we can return to a kind of landscape that gives us back the thing we can and must call our highest good, our health.